Hey, how's it going everybody? This is always back with another video on the channel. In this video, I am going to be talking about remote development using JetBrains IDE. So it was uh, for a very long time, we only had a VS code giving us an ability to do the remote development very, very easily. And for a very long time, I wish that JetBrains have something similar. Now they have had this uh, gateway application, which was like a lightweight client to remote into any server where your backend ID will run and you could do all the processing on your remote machine. It wasn't in a stable state for a very long time. I tried it like many months ago, but it wasn't working as uh, I was expecting. There was a lot of bugs, but now it's in a beta state and I have been trying out this application for last about a couple of weeks. And this is going to be a tutorial, but also a review about how the JetBrains team has made this application. And is it ready for you to actually rely on your production um, code? So first of all, let's get started by looking at how do you get this application. So obviously you need to have uh, access to JetBrains Gateway, which is like not a free uh, free application. So if you have a subscription to JetBrains, then it comes free. So right now in my main computer, like not main computer, but like the, the Mac, I have this uh, Gateway installed and also IntelliJ. But now let's say I want to use this gateway to connect to the remote machine. So first of all, let's open um, JetBrains gateway. And the interface is pretty simple. So here you can actually use JetBrains spaces as such connection, or you can also do a git pod, which will be running in your Docker to do all your development. We're going to be focusing on SSH. Right now, here in SSH, you see I have one connection already, but let me give you a quick tutorial how to set it up. So you click on new connection, and then you will click on this settings button, and then you will add a connection by clicking on this add button. Give it your host, your port, and then username, and if it's a password or if it's a, you know, um, any key that you're going to be using, that can be set up as well. So it's like setting up your SSH configuration for your remote machine. So we already have this set up, as you can see here. And if I click on this test connection, and you can see I'm successfully able to log into it. Let's cancel out and then click on back. From here, I'm going to click on SSH. And here is the previous configuration that I have. So if you don't see anything here, you will click on this plus button, which will be opening your project. In this window, you will see IDE version. So if you click on this, you will be able to see the installed version of IDE. For example, for me, IntelliJ IDE is already installed. So that is actually two version of IntelliJ install, I can click on this, let's say PyCharm. And if I click on download ID and connect, it will download the PyCharm backend and then connect to it. But that will be uh, taking a long time. So I'll just stick to IntelliJ idea. Then I'll click on this three dot button here. And then that will open up this window where I can see the folder structure of a remote machine. So I'm going to click on try out and let me try opening this folder. So if I click on open and click on start ID and connect. So JetBrains will start IntelliJ IDEA backend on my remote machine and then we'll open this project directory and we'll launch the client. Now this thing can take a bit of time if you're doing this for the first time, but because I have been uh, running this backend for many times, so it's pretty uh, quick for me. So now you can see the application that we're running is called JetBrains Client, but it looks like everything like IntelliJ IDEA interface is here. So I'm gonna right click on this and then create a new file. Let's just create a JavaScript file and I'm going to name it index.js. Okay, the file is there. Now let's open a terminal and you can see I'm not in a Mac, but I'm in a remote machine. So it automatically does that. 
I want to check what node version I have. So I've got this version. I'm going to do console.log hello from idea backend. And let's run this node index.js and you can see the result there. Now, another thing is because this is a full fledged uh, IntelliJ idea, it'll give you ability to create Java projects and then everything that comes with IntelliJ idea. There are a few things that are still not available, uh, but they're very rarely used. So here I can create on plus and I can uh, do a node.js and then let's say run and I'll just select the version of Node. These are all versions coming from your backend remote server. So I'll use this, this version and click on apply, click OK. Um, I actually need the JavaScript file, so I'll just select the JavaScript file there. Click on apply and OK. Now I I'm going to show you a couple more things about JetBrains clients. Here on the top left, you can see it is an IntelliJ IDEA preview. You can also see the CPU load, memory, and a disk. You can see some settings there for backend. So right now, I'm just giving it to a uh, gigabyte of memory to be used for IntelliJ IDEA backend. Now, pretty much everything is here. So if you have this as a git, so let me go back and say git in it and then I'll just open the git version control and you can see the logs and local changes so pretty much everything that comes with IntelliJ is here here is some network uh, information that how long it's taking to connect to your backend if you have a latency issue it will just show you here okay so basically I have got right now 8 gigabyte uh, a Mac book air which is not enough to run many projects in the front end. So what I do is I just run everything in the remote machine, which has a lot of RAM and it's a strong processor as well. And I'll just connect to it using JetBrains client or JetBrains gateway, which basically, you know, make me feel like I'm working on IntelliJ idea. The answer to the question is JetBrains gateway or JetBrains client is, uh, it's, ready to be used in production code or you know your main projects the answer is yes um, because most of the features that are required are basically working now there are some features or bugs that might come up but you know if you are really uh, getting an opportunity to use the IntelliJ idea like you know client uh, and running the processing and all the horsepower in the backend remote server, then I think the trade-off is worth it. I have been using this and basically moved away from VS Code because I really wanted to have a IntelliJ idea like user interface, like all my shortcut keys are working and I don't have to worry about, you know, uh, being this very harsh on the system resources. So yeah, give it a try. If you have an IntelliJ subscription, uh, it's pretty good. Now the catch here is uh, you're gonna need a Linux back, uh, Linux as your uh, remote server, and that has to be an AMD64, like x86. The ARM base is not supported yet. So yeah, uh, I've been really enjoying this uh, JetBrains client, and I hope you do too as well. So thanks for watching, and I'll speak to you guys in the next video. Chase.